In this new watch tutorial, we're going to take a look at the surround panner and see how you can use that on the Nuage fader unit. So here I have that, uh, the mock-up of the uh, 5050 project, just sort of for demonstration purposes. And if we take a look at this channel, cars, um, when we go to the panning section of the fader unit, the knobs control the surround panner. Um, in this case, cars is routed to uh, the, f the sound effects stem, which is a 5.1 uh, group channel. So we have a surround panner. In its most basic format, the surround panner consists of the x-axis and the y-axis. x being left and right, y-axis being front and back. And on the fader unit, when uh, you have called up the pan section, the knob set does just that. We have the left-right control, and then the front rear control, like that. But that's just the beginning. If we expand the channel and open up the edit channel settings on the fader unit, now we get all of the pan controls here. And there's about, what, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 parameters for a mono channel surround pan. The LFE parameter right here is the simplest one. This just adjusts how much of that signal will go to the LFE channel of the destination bus. And there's really nothing else to it. Um, the LFE is a completely independent control. Um, it's not tied to the position of the sound source in the surround sound field. So what I'm going to do to make this uh, more visually apparent is I'm going to put the test generator here on this channel and um, uh, show the, the meter over here, the surround meter, so we can see how the pan controls affect where the signal goes in the surround bus. So, for example, if I move the signal to the left, you can see that the, the left meter here um, is, is indicating the signal. If I move it all the way to the right, you can see the right meter here. If I bring it back to the center, you can see the center channel here. If I turn up the LFE, you can see the LFE right here. It's the next. Then, if I move the, the signal to the rear, you can see the rear two channels right here. If I pan it left rear, just the left rear signal meter, right rear, there's the right signal meter. So, Let's start again with the center pan. Um, you can use uh, the, the graphic image of the panner as a joystick panner. So we can move the signal around freely in the surround field. And you can see how all the parameters change to reflect that and all the signal levels in the main meter change to show where that signal source is actually going. I'm going to open up the surround panner GUI itself to make it just a little bit easier to see. Now you can see as I move things around how the levels change over here. So that's just the simple X and Y parameter, left and right, front and rear. There are some additional ways to control that X and Y in the Nuendo panner. One of them is using the radius and orbit center controls. Let me pull the radius in a little bit and then use this orbit control. It's measured in degrees. And as I rotate the signal around various degrees, um, you can see it's traveling in a circle about the listening position, which is in the center. Listening position is right here. So um, if I move the signal out, the radius is the distance from the center, from the listening position, and the orbit control um, is the degree, the radius degree around the center that the signal's positioned. So as I push the radius out further, you can see the signal source moving further away from the center. Then I can pan it around like that. 
Now, all the controls on the second row of knobs, knob two, these have to do with um, the divergence of the signal away from one single channel. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. Um, let me just show you what I'm talking about. The center distribution, this parameter here, adjusts how much of the signal is being presented by the left and right speakers versus the center channel. If we have 100% center distribution, then um, the, a signal that is routed or, or panned to the center image is really being carried by the left and right speakers as opposed to the center channel speaker. If the, so, so for example, if I pan to the left, it's really just a difference between the left and right signal levels. Now, if I bring the center distribution all the way back down again, when that signal is panned in the center, it comes out of the center channel speaker only. And as I move it to the left, we gradually increase the left signal back to center to the center channel speaker and to the right speaker. This is most often uh, a factor when you're dealing with dialogue. If you want the dialogue to pan uh, away from the center channel and go to the left and to the right, um, you would want 0% center distribution. Um, a lot of times sound effects and music, you might not want to have pass through the center channel for various reasons, uh, depending on how you want it to sound. Something that is in the phantom center created by the left and right channel sounds definitely different than something coming out of the center channel speaker. So depending on the sound, you might want that effect to be um, uh, the phantom image as opposed to the center channel image, depending on what the sound is. This is how you control that, by the center distribution. Sometimes you want just a modest amount of center distribution so that as the signal passes left and right across those front three speakers, some of it goes to the center channel. Maybe not all of it, but some of it does. That's what center distribution is. Okay, front focus. If we have 100% front focus, the left and right pan has no effect. Um, as you turn down the front focus, the left and right pan has more of an effect. It's basically sending more of this signal to the front speakers equally across all three channels. Um, focusing the sound towards the front of the sound field. However, 100% front focus renders the left-right panner um, useless as far as the front speakers are concerned. So the sa same is true with side focus, except this has to do with the front rear panner. If we have a signal 100% side focused, then as I pan from front to rear, Notice the signal level does not change at all. Left and right will still work, but front and rear has no effect. In essence, side focus brings the signal out into the middle of the sound field. It's equally in the front speakers as it is in the rear. You can still pan left and right, but the sound source is going to be more in the center of the room rather than the front of the room or the rear. Then we have rear focus. And as you can imagine, this has to do with the rear speakers. So if I have a sound source pan to the rear, now left and right is rendered inoperable because the rear focus is at 100%. If I turn... If I turn the signal, the rear focus off, and I gradually move the source to the rear, we can see those rear speakers turning up. However, if rear focus is all the way on, and I move the signal source towards the rear, the left right will no longer have any effect. The left, right, and front rear controls are then duplicated down here on the last four knobs of the second row. 
This is just to, sort of as a placeholder, makes it more convenient if you want to get to those panning parameters closely. In the stereo and surround panners for, for stereo and surround channels, uh, those knobs are occupied by other parameters. So here they're more or less placeholders, but also give you a more convenient way to get to the left, right, and front rear controls. So let's take a look at a stereo channel here, the cafe ambience. So we can see what a stereo panner looks like. Or I should say, it's a surround panner for a stereo channel. There are two signal sources here in the panner, and uh, one of them being the left signal, one of them being the right signal. So right now, with the source panned into the center and front, you have a signal in the left and right channel of the mix bus. Now, as I move the signal source to the rear, you can see the rear channels coming up left and right. So now if I pan to the left, we can see those signals being combined to the left channel. If I pan to the right, they're being combined to the right channel. Now we also have the signal width control. And as I reduce the width, it's bringing the left and the right channels together and putting them out the center channel like that. Now, if I was turning up the center distribution, we'd see the signals go back out to the left and right channels. But with the width brought down to zero, it would be the same signal in the left and the right. So it would still appear mono. It's just the mono source is being generated by the left and right speakers, not by the center channel speaker. So reduce center distribution. Now we can see the signal source coming out of the center channel. So let me put the width back up again. If you notice down here, these controls now are left and right, front and rear for each individual source. There's two sources, the left and the right. So now I can move the left channel towards the right, or I can move the left channel to the rear. I can do the same with the right channel. So now I'm in this in this setup or this position, I have the left channel of the stereo source coming out of the front left speaker and the right channel of that stereo source coming out of this right surround speaker. That's a little bit different. So as things get a little bit more complicated, the panner gets a little bit more complicated. We still have the orbit control. So now we can take this stereo source and rotate it around the listening area very easily. It's nice to have these more sophisticated panning controls that allow you to do more interesting things uh, in the project than just simply X and Y controls. Finally, let's take a look at a surround panner from a surround signal source. In this case, the dialog stem group channel. So now we have a lot of the same controls um, that we did with a stereo source, except instead of width, we have signal depth added. I mean, we still have signal width, but we have signal depth because now we're dealing with five sources and how they're positioned within the sound field. I can still use the orbit controls to rotate the entire surround field around the listening position. We still have some of the same left and right controls here down at the bottom. So I can control the left side where it goes front to rear. Notice how it's sort of rotating that left surround channel around the right side, doing the same sort of thing. And the center channel even uh, gets moved as we take the uh, left channel and pan it towards the rear. So there's a lot more interesting stuff going on here with a surround signal source and the surround panner. It's not just a simple XY panner. So experimentation with these parameters and how they affect the sound field with different sources is something that you should definitely spend some time doing to understand how this works. Last but not least, we have the difference between the rotate signal and orbit center. Rotate signal looks much like orbit center when the center of the 5-1 signal source 
is in the center of the listening field. However, if we increase the radius and we move that the, the center image of this 5.1 source off the center point of the listening area, now orbit center does something a little bit different. It's rotating the signal around the center listening position, but not the center image position of the source. So let me reduce the, the, um, the signal depth and the signal width so you can see this a little bit clearly. Okay, so I'm going to orbit center like this. I'm orbiting that 5.1 signal source around this, the listening position. However, rotate signal orbits the individual five channels around the center image of that signal, which is determined by the radius and orbit center controls. When the the image is placed at the center listening position, orbit, orbit center and rotate signal have the same effect. So there you go. There is a, a more in-depth look at the surround version 5 panner in Nuendo using the Nuage Fader unit. We'll be back with uh, more tutorials.